Okay. Well, you're going to be asked about tomorrow. And normally I don't ask about this when you guys are going to play Clemson at home, but with circumstances being what they are, um, is there any communication with the team about that, or you just let them handle the street thing? Oh, <laughs> Jesus, that, that answer is right there. I had no idea. Did you know we have it? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I've said the same thing for 17 years. I've said the same thing exactly, that it's a street that people talk about. You have nothing to do with it. Uh, it's going to end at some time. Let's try to put it off another year. I've said that for 17 straight years and never varied from it. And then I'll let it go. I really do, because I think that's the – it's unusual, uh, but – that's that's it. I really did not think it. Where are we going here? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I wasn't following where you were going to. Not that my brain so messed I don't think up. I've never asked you about that yeah, before, so. no, that's exactly what I said it yesterday at practice, and I won't say a thing about it today. And and uh, I don't know if I've always said it two days before or the day before, but I've always said it exactly like that. I know you remember games really well. Do you happen to recall the the 2008 game? Danny Green um, had about 28. Tyler Hansbrough at 39. Hinch Hill versus Clemson. They had Trevor Booker, Cliff Hammonds, and went into over overtime. Is that the game we were down like 13 or we something? We were down. Tied in play, Q played. Yeah, we were down about game. 13 or something. Tyler yeah, Hansbro Tyler. dove at the middle of the 10-second line, knocked the ball loose. We got it. Yeah, I, I remember some things about it. That was, I think we played uh, three games that year against Clemson. Yeah, that's correct. Is that correct? Yes. And I think they could have won all three games. And fortunately, we won all three. Fortunately for us, we won all three. But I think that was really a good Clemson team, and we were really good. I mean, there's – some trains thought in my mind that that may have been as good a team as we've ever had. And, uh, but yeah, I remember that game. I remember uh, that one specific play. It was a loose ball and Tyler Hansbrough just laid out and uh, got it and we ended up scoring on the other end and we had to, we were down, I think I'm right, we were down like 13 or 14 with less than six or seven minutes to go in the game. And 11 with three, 12. Yeah. So, so do you, I mean, it seems like maybe, Maybe not. Do you remember what it took to, you know, get that run <coughs> and come back in that particular game? Uh, so yeah, the same thing always. You got to get great shots on the offensive end and got to buckle down a little bit and play better defense than you had been playing. But I don't remember it that closely. But uh, that team, we had a couple of three good comebacks with that team. Uh, and again, that was a big one against Clemson. But. Uh, is that the year we beat them on the last second shot at Clemson? Was that the year Overtime before? Overtime down there, Wayne yeah. hit the three at the yeah. buzzer. Yeah, so we've we've had some great games with them over the years, but uh, that one specifically, I remember that play and a few things, but not much. How was practice yesterday? How did the guys sort of respond to you? Uh, we just uh, shot and did a few uh, sort of dummy offensive things, but uh, you know, it's uh, <laughs> I got to wait until I walk out on the court to see if he's going to practice, and so it's a little bit of that. I mean. It wasn't a big deal, but even the day before the uh, pit game, you know, we didn't even know if uh, Jeremiah was going to play. I didn't know if Jeremiah was going to be able to play until that morning. And uh, I walked out on the court during warm-ups to see if it was still okay, you know, because you just there's just it's, it's one of those years. There a lot of them coming, but uh, uh, the night before I didn't know if Jeremiah was going to be able to play against Pitt, and so. I wait now. I've gotten to the point that I wait till I get out there and I look around. And, you know, Doug gives me the injury report every day. And I mean, we even came back from Christmas at five days. And we have counting our walk ons, we count everybody. We have 18 guys. I had 10 guys on the injured list, you know, the day after five days off. So um, we wait till we see who we have out there. How do you think the morale of the team right now? Yeah, it was. I think they were hurting a great deal after the uh, Georgia Tech game, and even more so after the Pitt game. I think it was more of a, my gosh, we didn't play, embarrassed. This is not right after the Georgia Tech game, and in the Pitt game, I think they uh, felt like they had done some good things in the first half and let one slip away, and uh, frustrated, mad, and hurt, all those kind of things. But uh, I think we had a. Uh, good attitude yesterday at practice, and I expect us to have a good attitude today. Well, you made a comment about after the least gifted comment you had said you have to bring your A game 
when you're in that situation mm -hmm. every time out mm -hmm. if you're going to have a chance. Did that message sink into them, do you think, at this point? I have no idea, you know, and in those, I tell those guys, I say, hey, guys, you got an opportunity to listen to a thousand comments. I mean, you know, somebody can say, remember one thing I mentioned to you guys, if I say B comes after A, that's, that, that's the truth, so it shouldn't, hell, there'll be somebody that's going to say something about that, so I don't get too, uh, I don't talk to my team too much about what other people say and whether they, I don't, I don't think they listen to it. I don't know if they listen to me during timeouts, much less what I say or somebody says that I said. Uh, but that whole thing to me was weird. I mean, it really was. It was the most unusually weird thing I think that I've, that goes back to people getting upset because I wore a sticker. When the time before I'd waved Carolina blue pom-pom when I was coaching in Kansas and it wasn't a big deal. So this was not at that level, I'm not saying that, but that was just weird, so. I guess about the A games, that, that message to them that you're trying to really drive home that it's... I did, again, I don't know if they even heard that, you know, uh, what I, I, I tell... I meant away when you talk to the team, I guess, oh, not okay. the radio comments okay. per se. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you know, because I tell them all the time, guys, we've got to play well. We've got to play well. And, and Steve brought this up, I had two, we've had some teams that won games that we didn't play very well. Well, we haven't done that so far this year. And so I tell them, you've got to play well. And that's, that's the message. I don't say A game, B, C, or anything like that. We've got to play well. And don't use excuses. I mean, I played in a golf tournament this summer. And I, was, I wanted to play great. And, uh, and too much information for you. We lost 4-5, four, 4-5, five, four, five, won 5-4, five, lost 4-5, lost 4-5. So we're one shot away from in every match. But we lost four out of the five. Well, you know why? We didn't play well. It's pretty damn easy to figure out. So that's what usually happens in basketball, that uh, if you're this team, if you play well, you've got a much better chance of winning. When I had Ty and Wayne, Danny and Sean and Kendall and Harrison and John, those guys, uh, we were very gifted, which I've used that word forever, uh, but we were very gifted and sometimes we won games when we didn't play well. I remember going in the locker room one night and I am so mad and Joe Holiday's right behind me. Now remember, remember, we won, and it's a conference game. Uh, so it's your level of uh, belief in your team and uh, their level of capability. And, you know, if you've got four or five guys who are going to be number one draft choices sometime, you can not play well and still win. And I've told this team, we need to play well. I didn't say we don't have this or we don't have that. I've tried to stress to them, let's play well on game day. Let's play well on game day. Coach, uh, I don't know. Does that answer it any better? Because yes, yes. I, I don't I ever asked, use. I didn't ask it clearly. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't no, ever you, use a game. No, I have to, a game, b game. I used to have an a game in golf. Now I got a d game. Coach, out of all your seasons at Car or all your time in Carolina, you've had a lot of successful seasons. This year, kind of with all the injuries, and as you mentioned, the, the talent on the roster presents a different challenge. So guys, come on now. I don't say talent. I just well, say gifted. Well, in terms of like That's the Dallas a, All-Americans and, and whatnot. Okay, go ahead. As a coach, have, have you learned anything about yourself and about coaching that, that maybe... Learned some things I don't want to learn. I mean, I had a coach tell me, this will make you a better coach. I am 69 years old. I've coached 32 years. You think I give a blankety blank about... <laughs> I want to win. I want to become a better coach by coaching every team and getting them uh, closest to their potential as I possibly can. And the guy that told me that's a guy I have a tremendous, tremendous uh, amount of respect for. But it is, and uh, you know, what you say when you do that is it makes you look into things. And guys, I do that my whole life. Every game, we beat somebody by 30. And I'm talking about our national championship teams, this year's team, we haven't beat anybody by 30 this year's team. We beat anybody by 30, I go home, I study that stat sheet like I'm an idiot. I will grade that tape like I'm a freaking idiot. There's only so, you know the difference in Roy Williams now, the biggest difference, and going winning, what did we win, 15 out of 16 down the stretch last year? I've never been one to sleep. I'm not sleeping at all now. That's the only difference. I'm serious. I can tell you right now, when it, that game, I can tell you everybody's stat line across through there, what the other team did. I grade every tape. I stay up every night. And uh, 
The only thing is, when you're winning, it's easier to finally go to sleep. But uh, normal night for me is four and a half to five hours, and now it's nowhere close to that. You just like turning in bed or just staying up looking at that? <laughs> <laughs> We're so detailed now. This press conference I'm is really close cool. here. <laughs> <laughs> this press conference is gone <laughs> from a, <laughs> is this rated? <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ, yeah. Oh, and yeah, and I take two sleeping pills a night. Instead. But I, the guys, that's, that's the way I've been. It's just a lot worse, okay? But no, usually, well, after a loss, I don't sleep at all. I mean, uh, I go to bed and it doesn't work, so I get up and read the stat sheet for a hundredth time, uh, read, uh, uh, look at the scouting report again to see if I left something out. Uh, plan to practice for the next day and the next day and the next day. Uh, it's, I mean, you know, I'm a little weird. It's just the bottom line. But you know, uh, sometimes I might be able to go to sleep quickly and then I wake up and then I'm done. So I might as well just get up. And uh, I've been known to go out in the middle of the night and go for a walk, you know, midnight, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, I've been known to do that. I've been known to get up and get the iPad out. and I, I can't do anything with an iPad except one thing. I can plug in and get the craps game. So I shoot craps in the middle of the night. And I say, come on. You know, it's, that's about all. Like I say, this press conference has gone south quickly. So, But no, it's just, it's, uh, uh, Coach Smith told me the night again, the night before I left, said my biggest worry about you, and I've told some of you guys, been around here long enough to hear this, is that, he said, my biggest worry about you is how hard you take the losses as an assistant. And it's a lot worse as a head coach. And uh, he's uh, right again. It's, it's a lot worse. Roy, given, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Given just kind of the climate now and coaches' salaries and that kind of thing, do you think in today's day and age there would, there would be an opportunity to be another Roy Williams, meaning an assistant take a, a high, you know, a blue blood job? Coach. Yeah, geez. Uh, well, Matt Darty went as an assistant from me to the head coaching job at Notre Dame. Uh, uh, Wojo went as an assistant from Duke to the head job at Marquette. Uh, Chris to Northwestern. Uh, uh, Jared, who jumped, but there was one in between at Birmingham to Stanford. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, they, at that time when, when I did it, uh, uh, when Kansas offered me the job, Wade Houston at Tennessee was the only other one that people talked about at that time. But it's, it changes, too. It, the difference is now, uh, I believe this in the bottom of my soul, in the late uh, 70s, early 80s, no athletic director made a decision on who he was going to hire without talking to Coach Smith or Coach Knight, 75% of the time. And the other 25% probably didn't, but I believe 75% of the uh, coaches, I mean, athlete directors would call Coach Smith or Coach Knight. Uh, now there's a lot of athlete directors I call and leave a message 10 times. They won't even call me back trying to recommend somebody. So it's a different world out there. The athlete directors come more from the business side of things as opposed to the Frank Broyles and guys like that, uh, uh, Coach Dooley at Georgia, who were former coaches that uh, became ADs. And I think, uh, and let's be honest, I wouldn't have gotten a job in Kansas. I mean, come on, I wouldn't have been the guy there if it hadn't been for Coach Smith and Dick Hart being a uh, Kansas graduate. I'm not being humble saying that. I'm just telling the truth. After the game uh, two nights ago, you said you implemented a new offense, and some of the players talked about practically that was a little more ball screen action, a little more movement in the half court. Could you try and... You know, details specifically, like what what changed um, offensively Pitt versus what you guys were doing. Maybe when well, it didn't there. work during Pitt, <laughs> so <laughs> we got we half. got we got zero we got zero points off of it against Pitt. So we're still we're still trying. But you know, uh, just because it's America doesn't mean I have to tell you every daggum thing we're doing either. Mm -hmm. And if I did, you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't understand what the hell I was saying either. But uh, answer the questions, no. I'm not going to give you any more friends. If it starts working, then you can ask me about a specific instance, and I'll tell you. But it's more than you would understand. And I know it's a lot more than you can freaking write down on it or put down on your computer. <laughs> and I'm not being – I'm just no. – <laughs> this, this, come to one of my coaches' clinics, and I don't, and I don't charge you. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, is there? I, I know you have a long list of things you're focused on. Yeah. Is there one or two things in particular you say this is fix? This is something I think we can accomplish. Like we got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Let's start here. It's a good way to ask it too, because there's things that you. I, I give our guys. Okay, these are things that could be changed easily. So let's change those. These are other things that you know we tried for 15 games and our shooting percentage is still not very good. But we're still working on those. We're trying to get better shots. We're working on shooting every day. Like I said, not to your question, but when the opening thing is yesterday, we shot. We shot a lot. Okay, so we're still working on that, even though that's not easy to change. We're working on getting better shots, which is a little bit of the offense thing. Uh, so we're doing that, but those things are hard to change. But something like, uh, come on, guys, we work on closeouts every day. Why don't you close out better as opposed to 15 bad closeouts against Georgia Tech? Okay, and it, uh, uh, we work every day on seeing man and seeing ball. you got to have concentration during the game. So in the Georgia Tech game four times, we let the guy get the back of a hair, and it was a veteran. So some things can change, and that's what we talk about even yesterday is this – can this be changed? And if so, is it easy to change? If that's the case, then let's do it. And we put certain things in this category and certain things in the other category that are harder to change. It's harder to change our health. You know, we can't do a lot about that. It is easier to change to remember when I call 42 defense and we leave the bench and we go out and we forget it out there, that's easier to change. And so those are the kind of things too. Is that a deviation from like past years? And it sounds like you're talking about some really fundamental focus things like mm -hmm. closeouts and so forth. Yeah. Is that different from previous years in that regard, the focus on that? Well, you know, I'm, uh, I am comfortable with my coaching. I really am. That's a better way to say it, I guess. I've had teams that led the nation in scoring. I've had teams that lead the nation in rebound margin. I've had teams lead the nation in assist. I've had teams, believe it or not, that led the nation in defensive field goal percentage. And so that's a pretty good broad range. With different teams, those teams are going to have different strengths. Uh, uh, one of our former players, you know, so we used to write the names up on the board and say jump shooter, driver, can't shoot, offensive rebounder, and that was it. Now we give them a scouting report and we show them tape. And, you know, it's, so the whole coaching thing is involved, but uh, the better teams can handle things differently. When I had Jock Vaughn and Jared Hass, I'd say, who are the best scorers on the other team? And they'd say the guards. And I said, let's go to something else. I really would. We didn't even talk about it because they were the two best defensive guards I've ever coached. And they were going to take care of those two guys. So let's go to something that was going to make a difference in the game. So the level of your talent does make you change how much more you give them. And the same thing. I mean. Jock and Jared ruined me too because they were so good, but also because we played a team one time that used to hold up a card and what play they were going to run. Well, Jock and Jared wanted to know what that was. And it was really a good team, and they took them out of everything. Everything. And so we started paying more attention to scouting reports. And, you know, a couple years later, we played the um, same kind of situation. <laughs> and they hold it up. And, B-23, and they ran B-23 and scored. You know, so the, the personnel that you have, the talent you have, makes you do more things or less things. And uh, I've had guys just say, Coach, is he a driver or a shooter? They didn't care if it was left or right or whatever. So a little bit of that. But this team, uh, you're always, as a coach, you're always searching to see if there's anything else that you can give them. And I think the only difference in the question about uh, – difference in making me a better coach is during those time periods you've got to decide how much you're going to give your guys. What do they need, for example, and what do they want and uh, how effective it's going to be for them. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, uh, I'll add one thing to the question about making, not necessarily making me a better coach. I use that from somebody else. Uh, but uh, when you're winning and when you're really good, you're also silly if you don't keep looking. And some of our great teams, I mean, I, I mean, the night before the uh, Michigan State game for the national championship, we had beaten them easily before. I was worried to death, okay, because there were still things I wanted to make sure that you don't want to leave any stone unturned. Uh, 
And I think that's one thing with the question again about this year being different is that uh, when you pick whichever team, I tried to make sure I didn't leave any stone unturned because I wanted to make sure that after the game I could feel, okay, you did what you needed to do. Now I worry more <laughs> about did I leave or was there anything that I don't even recognize that realized that I may have missed. But uh, it's uh, – uh, I really – Every one of my players will tell you I've mellowed. That's just because they say I ran them harder than I did these guys now. And there's some truth to that. I used to try to coach out of fear. They better be afraid I was going to kill them the next day at practice. And I wasn't real comfortable with that. And uh, as I matured, I just wanted to try to convince them to care as much as I cared and to convince them how important it was and convince them it was important and try to challenge them to get their level of care closer to mine. And uh, so that wasn't killing anybody or anything, but it's, it's that's changed over the years. One more? Is that what you get ready to Time for one more. Two, two, more. two, two quick ones. Two, yeah. Ross and Andrew, go ahead. Is there an update on Cole Anthony? Anything else? Uh, no. Uh, he, uh, well, here's an update. He, he shot, I saw him shot shoot ball yesterday. Uh, but that's it. Uh, yeah, I saw him shoot the ball yesterday and uh, and then I said, all right, let's show me if you can make one. And he shot four in a row, missed all four of them. So I said, okay, you're not ready. Uh, but he was standing still and wasn't jump, jump shooting or anything. When a team is struggling, um, do you notice a difference? That maybe it's confidence or kind of a here we go again mentality where it maybe it dulls their instincts. Um, you were talking about defense and some of the way they reacted. Mm -hmm. Does, is that affected by maybe a mindset? Yeah, and your you, your point there, it's 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 critical. Is that do you um, become more motivated, madder, hungrier, or do you lose more confidence? And that's it's it's a uh, thin line there. But of what you do, you know the old story. You can't uh, uh, you can uh, I'm not, I got to make sure I use the right words. A thoroughbred, you can push a guy, the horse that's not a thoroughbred, you can't beat on it. And it's a little bit with the team. Uh, more gifted, more, again, that word again, uh, the more gifted you are and more successful you are, you can push that team more, I think, than, uh, than you can a team that's hurting. Um, and this team, uh, any team that's hurting and has had some significant losses that bothered them, got some people really hurt. I think you coach them differently than you do Tyler Hansbro. Uh, uh, you still have to be honest. You know, you know, you're not playing very well. We got to change. You got to stop shooting the ball. Well, I'm gonna say that to the great teams, and and but I still have to say that to the other teams as well because you can't just say, oh, you're great. You know, I mean, <laughs> we're not great, I think. Uh, but something even like changing the offense is just. You're searching to try to find something that will help them uh, in certain situations. And uh, so that's what it is. Did you have one? Oh, yeah. I was just going to ask you. You mentioned how each team has a different relative strength. You know, sometimes it's offensive rebounding or mm -hmm. defense, whatever. Do you know what that is for this group yet? Or uh, when do you expect that, you know, is, is there a timetable for when you hope to sort of know that? Yeah, you'd like to know it early so you can plan things around and try to make what your strengths are most important factor in the game and try to make what your weaknesses are something that's not the most important thing in the game. And I think that's something that over the years I've enjoyed more about coaching that, all right, we're really good at this, so let's make that as important as we can. And, you know, we struggle over here, so let's cover that up a little bit. Uh, this team, um, We've been a, a good rebounding team, but not a great rebound. I mean, numbers are good, but, you know, it's, I, I don't go by the numbers. I mean, you know, two statistics, well, there's a lot of statistics that don't mean anything. Uh, are we leading the nation in number of rebounds? Yes. Why should I be happy about that? That means we're missing more shots, <laughs> you know, and we play at a faster pace. That's the reason I go by rebound margin so much more there. Assist, you know, we've – a lot of times we probably led the ACC and assist a huge majority of the time, and there's 15 teams, but I bet we've been way up there a lot because we play at a faster pace. Uh, but the rebounding with this team has been something that uh, uh, has been good but not great. And every other area, we still got to get a heck of a lot better.